We begin this morning with the head coach of the Old Dominion Monarchs, Wayne Taylor. Good morning, Coach Taylor. Hey, buddy. How are we doing, Rob? Doing just fine. Another uh, great week for you guys. Uh, wins at James Madison and Wayne and Mary and uh, coming to the tournament uh, on a six-game winning streak. Uh, talk about your team's uh, play and the two wins last week. Well, this league race, you just had to keep churning and burning. There was just no let-up. And, uh, you know, we've all kind of gone at each other pretty good. And then going to James Madison, I'm just really happy with our performance uh, Matt's done a really nice job there, and uh, you know, 20-game winner, and uh, you know, they had a nice crowd, and uh, and yet we handled everything that came our way, and and it was a good performance uh, under the circumstances. I think all of us kind of get caught, you know, senior day, and uh, that last game is, is a tough thing to kind of handle, and I thought we handled it quite well on Saturday. Kind of took all the uh, pomp and pageantry and feelings in stride, and. And then went and played a good game against a uh, women Mary team that really put up a tussle. You only know, made 12 three pointers and just scrapped all night long. So a good week for us. Before we get started on some of the questions, give you a chance to talk about that senior class. 94 wins with that win on Saturday, which I think ties the most of uh, any four-year class in in uh, in your school's history. Um, talk about that group and what they've meant to your program. Well, I, I, I don't want really to keep track of all these stats. Everybody keeps telling me all these stats. And the evening, it kind of makes me go, wow. Because uh, you look at all the games that they've played and, you know, all the you know, rebounds and assists and baskets. And, and then, of course, you know, the team success. Uh, you know, we've had some pretty good groups that have come through here that have, you know, won. I used to think 20 games a year was a, was an awfully good number. And now we've had three of our last four classes that, um, I've won 94 games, and these guys are still ticking, so uh, we'll, we'll see where it ends up. But uh, it's been a strong group, but, and what I'm probably more proud of than the basketball abilities is I think the guys around the league respect them as, as good competitors, but the classy guys uh, that, that, that you know, treat their players and their programs with respect, and then that's kind of the way we carry ourselves, and that, that's probably as, as much as anything what I'm proud of. Got some questions lined up for you. The first one from David Teal at the Daily Press. Good morning, David. Good morning, guys. Blaine, given your team's experience, not not only just from from an age factor, but CAA tournament experience, NCAA tournament experience, the kind of schedule you played this season, have you as a head coach ever had a team as prepared for postseason success as this one? Well, I think there's two ways to, to, to flip a coin. You know, sometimes, you know, ignorance is bliss. Sometimes you got a group that just doesn't know anything, and then they just don't even know what they don't know. And then sometimes you've got a group that has been down the trail. I, I'd like to think, uh, on the optimist side, that we know the pitfalls. Uh, it's not an expectation that we're going to have any more success because you have to go earn that. But I think we do know the pitfalls of, of preparation. I think we know the pitfalls of of expecting to be uh, in close games, expecting the other guy to really, you know, put it on and, and maybe play their best game of the year and us have to handle that. So I, I think that in that respect, they have a pretty steady, uh, solid view of just what competition means. Uh, if you think about it, you know, uh, if, if you look at tournaments, you know, you come from behind. Uh, when we were against Notre Dame last year in the NCAA, we were down you know, nearly 10 points in the first half. Uh, last year in the semifinals of the conference tournament, we have to win in overtime and come from behind in regulation to do it. So that's just how fine a margin you have. And then just kind of piggybacking on what Rob was talking about with six teams in the top 81, 620-win teams, uh, is is much of a of a coin flip in in Richmond this weekend as you can remember? Well, you know, yes and no. I mean, I think you know, hats off to Mason what they've done. I mean, I was in a press conference in early January and somebody was asking about a league race. And I said, you know, I just I just don't know unless somebody really gets on a streak what it's going to take to win this thing because it looks like everybody's going to beat everybody and. And you really got to, you know, they've run off quite a string of games. And so, obviously, they're the number one seed and would, would be, you know, pretty heavily favored. But I've often said this. People ask about our league's ability to compete nationally uh, or in postseason play. And, and I 
said, you know, if you can climb the standings in our league, you're going to become a pretty good basketball team that can play against most everybody. But the depth of our league is what's what's scary. Uh, when you, you you play one game, you say, okay, that was a really good team. Now who's next? And you go, oh, geez, <laughs> look at what they've done. And then, then you go play the next game and you go, oh, geez, look at what they've done. So uh, I think there are more uh, horses in the race than there's ever been, uh, probably. Uh, but uh, does that mean they can win the whole thing, or does that mean they just upset the apple cart? I don't know. Uh, I do think you know you've got to look at the basin pretty you know uh, pretty heavily, and then there's a whole bunch of us that can can get something done up there probably. Thank you, sir. Thank you, David. Blaine, next question for you from Melinda Waldrop at the Daily Press. Good morning, Melinda. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Blaine. Hey, nice shirt you wore to that press conference the other day. I appreciate that. Thanks. If you let me know what you're going to be wearing in Richmond, we can work that out, please. <laughs> All right. Um, just wondering, what's the mindset, uh, and, you know, how is media types like to know everything, knowing that you probably have a, a biz lockdown down regardless of what happens in the tournament, does that change anything, or are you just even more motivated to take a title into the tournament to sort of, you know, justify all this uh, speculation that, that you guys are a tournament team? Well, you know, I think you'd be surprised how little I talk about that to anybody on I mean, our team. I, I never talk about the standings. I, I, I don't really set a bunch of goals for the season. I don't really talk about bids. Uh, we just kind of take it as it comes. I think with us, there's a lot unspoken that's on the back of our minds. We have an expectation that we're going to be competitive. We have an expectation that, that the trail leads us somewhere. Uh, mm-hmm. And and if you sit there and worry about the end, you're not going to go down the road as, as steadily. And so, you know, I'm hopeful that, that we've got something good waiting for us, to, you know, down the line. But right now, I mean, we're, it's the old coach's cliche is, you know, to focus on what's right in front of you. And, and I think our kids are as excited as anybody about the possibility of going up to the tournament and, and just taking it a step at a time and seeing how far those steps take us. Mm-hmm. You say you don't talk about it much. Um, you said in a press conference earlier that you, know, you don't you don't play a season in reverse and you have to just focus on the next step. Have you had to, you know, discuss keeping those distractions at a minimum with the guys at all, given the success you did have last year and the thrill of that win over Notre Dame? Have you had to, you know, say, don't think about that yet, or are they pretty well focused themselves? Well, you know, sometimes I'm honest to a fault. Uh, I'll be real honest with you. The two problems that we had this year is it's great having seniors, but sometimes seniors think that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're going to be able to visit the President of the United States next weekend right away. And, you know, uh, it's just, you know, you almost have to re- be reminded how difficult it really is and how much work goes into it and how much sacrifice. And so that's one of the things that we dealt with with, with a number of seniors is they kind of had to reconnect to, you know, the reality of, of the competition and, and what it took. The other thing was expectation. Um, you know, the success we've had in the past has never really bothered us. It's, it's always fueled us. But this year, in some respects, it was a little more than normal. Uh, I think maybe from NCAA tournament success, uh, some you know some of that stuff comes, uh, and we had to kind of put that in its place. Uh, uh, never lost two games in a row all year. Uh, something I always pride our teams in is we bounce back quickly. Uh, and you know, I, there was a time in the, the season uh, I've told this story before where I walked into the team. I says, guys, you know what our record was last year at this time? And they all looked at me kind of funny, like I was going to you know jump them. And I said, you know what? It's the exact same as it was a year ago. And they all looked at me like, really? We were 18 and six a year ago, and we're 18 and six now. And you know, since that time, of course, we've won some games. But uh, you know, I think we had to kind of. Sometimes you think that everything was before was just perfect, and it wasn't. Uh, last year, you know, we didn't get we were, when we when we did the tickets for the conference tournament. You know, that's done three weeks in advance. We were the fourth seed, and then we ended up being you know winning the regular season title. So, you know, that's that's something that everybody kind of forgets. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Next question for you, Blaine, from Paul Woody at the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Blaine. Hope you guys hey are doing well. Hey, uh, Blaine, Ben Finney uh, seems to be coming on for you right now, and it seems to be a very important player. Can you talk about him for a few seconds? Well, each of my older kids, and, and you know, all of them, everybody kind of offers something a little bit different. But Ben is, is kind of... 
kind of the heart and soul of our bunch. You know, he's a very, very competitive kid. He, he, he really has a lot of passion for a competition, and and I think that's what he gives our team is 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 that entity. I mean, some of the other ones, you know, give us a little more smarts or a little more bulk or something, but but he gives us, you know, just that that heart and soul of of, of loving competition and going for it. Okay, just a wonderful kid to be around. Uh, very good teammate, good leader. Um, uh, really hard worker, and then of course you know he's he's all for burns and sweat. Good, thank you. Before I let you go, one more. Uh, be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about Frank Cassell's uh, finish to the season. Not that he hasn't had a great year uh, all together, but six straight double doubles to finish it up. Eight of the last nine. Just uh, touch on his performance a little bit. Well, uh, to my knowledge, he's been player of the week more than any other player in the league. Um, in conference play, you know, if you look at when he's been player of the week, it's been when we've been playing each other. So he's just, if you'd have told me in the preseason, and not that we all go back to those prognostications, but Frank was just, a, he was an honorable mention uh, guy, and, and he's really, really had a nice season. You kind of cross your fingers and hope that as a coach, but it doesn't always come to fruition. So uh, Frank's a wonderful story about a kid getting better. He just always had big eyes and big ears and try anything you say and do anything you ask. And, and as a result, he's gotten better and better and better. And I think his confidence has grown over the years as, as he's accomplished different. He's got more rings on the tree. You know, his confidence has grown, too. All right, Blaine. Thanks, as always, for your time today and uh, all season long. And we'll see you later this week in Richmond. Okay. See you guys down the trail. Thanks.